Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's beer review, we are going to be jumping in to a couple different Pilsners and there is an asterisk uh, by that and uh, we'll dig deeper into that asterisk once we get to beer number two today. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we're going to be starting with the Untitled Art Brewing Company's Italian Pilsner. This is 5% ABV out of Wenaki, Wisconsin. And then number, number two, we're moving over to Odd 13 Brewing's Superfly. And uh, the, the hint of the beer style is where the asterisk comes from. It's a killer Pilsner. 5.5% ABV out of Lafayette, Colorado. So uh, we're just going to jump right in. Starting with Untitled Art, Italian Pilsner, 5% ABV. Okay, so jumping into our first beer of today's review, this is Untitled Art's Italian Pilsner, 5% uh, ABV on this one out of Wenaki, Wisconsin. Now you've heard me talk about this multiple times about Czech and German style Pilsners, so you may be asking yourself, what exactly is an Italian Pilsner? Um, it's exactly what it sounds. It is modeled, specifically it's a sub-style that's come out in the last 15, 20 years based off of one uh, specific uh, Italian Pilsner, exactly as it sounds, um, that was brewed differently than the average beer. Typically, these are a bit uh, lighter and crisper than say their German or Czech counterparts, uh, but they tend to specifically, at least the beer upon which the sub-style has been modeled was brewed uh, using a noble hop regimen. Um, so specifically just using noble hops um, in, in the actual Pilsner itself. So it's gonna be light and crisp, but have that noble hop back to it. Um, so I'm very keen to jump in and see exactly what Untitled Art's rendition has in store. Ah, this one's a little frothy, spilling up out of the can. Now I will, um, hold up the can for the can art. If you didn't know, uh, Untitled Art, I, I think I mentioned this on that fudge sickle um, beer that we reviewed. They do have a, a specific can art, and the artist on this one is Noel Miller. So bravo, Noel Miller. Very cool looking art indeed. Let's get this poured straight in the glass. And it's going, whoops, got a sloppy pour here. Spilling onto my table. We don't want that happening. I should have been a bit more gentle and I knew it. <laughs> That's all right. We're going to get it all in here. Just let that head settle for a minute. Now, this is very typical for Pilsner. That's what you want to see. It is absolutely indicative and expected of the style to form a very nice, creamy, foamy head on top. And that is exactly what this did. That said, I can tell you, if I start to break it down with my finger, it will collapse quite quickly because there's a lot of very large and medium-sized bubbles in here, far more large ones than you see in your typical Pilsner. Um, so to be able to jump in a little quicker, I'm just gonna use my finger and break that head down just a bit so it'll settle a bit quicker. Appearance-wise, this is a beautiful, beautiful light straw pale yellow color that's uh, very indicative of uh, the range of color for the Pilsner. It looks lovely, it's very effervescent, very tight, fine champagne-like bubbles, though I can tell you, um, I can tell what made some of these larger bubbles in the head. I can see some very large bubbles uh, breaking out of the carbonation here. So it's got an interesting mix of uh, very tight, fine champagne, medium and larger bubbles. And you can see that head's already collapsed down to a drinkable point. Let's give it a sniff. Okay. You really gotta get down into this glass to pick it up, but once you do, you're rewarded with a classic, classic Pilsner aroma. It smells very nice. Uh, this smells a bit more hop forward than the average Pils. It doesn't have that slight sweetness to it, so you can smell the underlying malt and you can smell the hop edge to it, which really um, does put itself in a line with how an Italian Pilsner would come off and certainly much more a German than a Czech. But, uh, one more sniff, yeah, that smells great. Let's dive right in, that head settled. Ah, oh, 
that's a nice beer. That's a nice beer. And I think that they got it exactly right by calling this an Italian Pilsner. And indeed, this is a great representation of this new substyle. It has that more hop forward nature to it, um, which the specific beer was modeled after more hop forward, kind of American hop bill that we would use in our craft Pilsners, um, but with that same light, crisp, classic Italian Pilsner back. So you get that crisp, clean, nice, nice, nice Italian style pills with a more hop centric, like Americans who modeled on a heavier fisted, ham fisted version of the Germans. More hop centric, more hops, more bitters, more flavors, more aromas. This is a wonderful beer. This is a wonderful beer. What a great example. Nice medium light body as expected. Super creamy mouthfeel as expected. The finish, it's longer than your average Pilsner. Pilsners typically don't have a very long finish. It's uh, not really indicative of this style. They typically have a pretty short finish. But the hop intensity in this is so profound for a Pilsner that it really comes through and adds to the length of the finish. I don't consider this a bad thing. While it's not typical for the style, it's very enjoyable. And if you're gonna make a more hop-centric Pilsner, almost by nature, nature of the beast, you're gonna have a longer finish cause hops tend to stick around. They're bitters and they're oils that are naturally suspended in the beer. It's just gonna stick around the palate. And indeed, that's the case here. And it's very, very enjoyable. Nice, beautiful, earthy, bitter finish as you expect from Noble Hops. And uh, I am not sure what hops they used in here, but I'm assuming that they modeled it on the style and uh, substyle for their rendition. And maybe if not fully, entirely noble hops in the bill, uh, certainly probably has at least some. Um, God, that smells so good. I'm gonna jump one more time here. Starts with nice malty, malty base that only a slight sweetness um, and then it opens fully into the hop profile. That's kind of the balance of this beer. Uh, lovely balance of malt and hop and that's exactly as it should be. It's, it's simple in its structure though it's not easy to do and, it, and it's really an easy style to screw up. This is an excellent, excellent, excellent example of not both an Italian Pilsner but a Pilsner in general, by any subgenre or style uh, by which it's being modeled, this is a fantastic beer. I absolutely am enjoying this. I'm gonna take my time, come up with my scores, and uh, when we come back, we'll move on to the second beer today, the Odd 13 Brewing Superfly, which is a Keller Pilsner, and I will explain that when we get to that next. That's 5.5% ABV. Okay, now we're moving on to our second beer of today's uh, Pilsner review, and this is where the uh, asterisk comes into play. Beer number two is Odd 13 Brewing's Superfly, which uh, they are terming a Keller Pilsner, 5.5% out of Lafayette, Colorado. Now, before I dig into that, first I'm gonna show you the can art, because it's really, really neat on this one. I'm trying to avoid angling this at my light so it doesn't get glare. It's got this kind of comic book art appearance to it. And it looks really, really cool. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Okay, so a Keller beer and a Pilsner. They are completely different beer styles. Um, Keller is the German word for cellar. And it was named thus for that beer style because before modern lagering techniques were developed and pre-refrigeration days, they would create their lagers bottom fermenting beers, uh, which require cooler temperatures by letting the beers ferment literally in caves um, or underground uh, so that the temperatures were lower and the yeast would activate. Uh, ales are top fermenting and they ferment at higher temperatures than lagers, which are bottom fermenting. And uh, that is where the name Keller in the style Keller beer comes from. It's from the German word cellar, literally the history of how they were brewed. And Keller beers, 
They can run the gamut, but typically speaking, they are going to be darker in appearance uh, quite a bit uh, than your average Pilsner. Um, Keller beers tend to be more caramelly. They're gonna have more amber colors in them, and certainly the history and brewing techniques and the styles are completely different. So I don't know if they're trying to spin off a new sub style or, or just an homage to the history of Keller beer. Certainly they could have created this Pilsner um, in the Keller style by putting it in caves or underground for the lagering. Uh, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure where they're going with that. Uh, Pilsners are very distinct. They are classified by, <laughs> by being very light, very crisp, uh, run the gamut of hop forward nature, but most of them are. The traditional uh, Czech and German Pilsners are, um, and they have those uh, quintessential Pilsner, creamy, foamy heads. Pilsners are, you know, everybody knows what they are. Keller beers are completely separate. So I don't know if it's a new subcategory that they're trying to define or that has been defined, uh, but they are really two completely different beer styles. So maybe they're making a hybrid of the styles, which ought to be interesting. I'm, I'm really excited to jump into this one. This particular beer is brewed uh, using uh, three different hops, uh, Saz, Huel, Melon, and Hallertau Blanc. Now, some of these are the classic noble hops, which uh, there, there are four hops that form the noble hops. If you hear that term, I know I've mentioned it here and I've never actually defined it. Um, three of which are German hop strains and one of which is Czech. There's uh, Hallertau, that's German. There's Saz, S-A-A-Z, that's the Czech uh, hop strain, uh, Spalt and Tetnang. Uh, the last two are also German. Those are what are the clumping of hops that are known as noble hops. They are the classic um, bittering hops that were used by German brewers and indeed Czech. Um, there's a lot of interplay between Czech and beer history and indeed uh, the style in particular Pilsner. You'll often hear me make references to the classic German and Czech. It is technically a Czech style. It was invented in um, the city of Pilsen in the Bohemian region of Czechoslovakia. Uh, and it was based off of a German, it might've even been a German brewer who was in Czechoslovakia at the time. It was a, obviously not Czechoslovakia at the time, it was a different name, but, uh, or the Czech Republic. It might've been Czechoslovakia, I'm not really sure, but, um, have to check the history on the timing of it. It is an older style by a couple hundred years now. But uh, I believe it was a German living there that actually created the style or was a Czech who took the style of a German and came up with their own kind of version of the beer. But uh, Pilsner is named after the city in which it was um, invented and that's the city of Pilsen in, uh, in what is modern day Czech Republic. Um, so there's a lot of overlap between German and Czech style Pilsners. Just a little background history there. Nonetheless, let's get this one cracked. Pour it straight in the glass. All right. Aha! Right away, appearance-wise, I can tell you this doesn't have anything in common with your average Keller beer, just based on appearance. This looks very much like Pilsner. <laughs> so perhaps they were just uh, following classic Keller beer techniques. So it's a Keller Pilsner, a uh, cellar lagered Pilsner, which would make sense. God, that is a beautifully lush creamy head, just as you expect on a Pilsner, not as much on a Keller beer. It's uh, incredibly, incredibly effervescent. And this is a beautiful light pale straw color. This is kind of the classic quintessential Pilsner depth of color on, on the Lovabond or SRM scale. Lovabond really refers to the malt, SRM really refers to the color of the finished beer. Um, nonetheless, it looks fantastic. It's a very, very lovely looking beer. Now this one I can tell you was brewed in the uh, German tradition uh, called Naturtrube, which is German for naturally cloudy. And the camera is probably not picking this up, but I can indeed confirm that it is naturally slightly occluded. Uh, not the depth of, say, a hazy New England IPA, but it does have a cloudy appearance, much like a Hepa Bites in wood. 
Um, it's uh, quite a lovely beer. I, I really do think that it, they made a lovely one here. So it's naturally cloudy and this is unfiltered. Uh, so that uh, leads to the Nacho Trube characteristics here. And uh, throwing in uh, several uh, Noble Hops and sub spin-offs of Noble, uh, they've got the Hollertau Blanc, which is different from Hollertau, but it's from the same, uh, same family line, same um, offsprings of plants. So, looks great. Um, get in for a sniff. Oh, this smells quite nice. You can smell, it smells very light, very refreshing. A little bit of a malt back, but the hop aroma really comes through. It smells very floral. It smells very, very floral and uh, just bright. I cannot wait to jump in here and uh, see what this tastes like. That head is settled, still holding beautifully and creamy. What a fantastic head on this one. Oh, oh, that's really nice. Okay, everything about this beer screams Pilsner and it screams American craft interpretation of classic Czech and German Pilsner. Those classic more hop forward nature, I'm always talking about the traditional Czech and German Pilsners is amplified in this one. This American craft interpretation is much more hop forward indeed. This is uh, really one of the more hop forward Pilsners, Keller Pilsners are calling it, that I've ever had. And uh, that's a huge compliment. As you know, I am a professed hop head and uh, Pilsners can be so tame. I really appreciate the brewers that, that just go a little bit bigger with their hopping. And it adds so much more depth to the aroma and certainly to the flavor. Now this is not bitter and hoppy on the level of an IPA maybe equivalent to some of the lighter session IPAs, but it's got a very nice hot presence and a hot bite. And it, it just goes so well with the total package of this beer. Uh, let's jump in for body mouthfeel finish. It's got a medium, medium light to medium. It's kind of in that mid range body at five and a half percent that's about what i expect it's uh, heavier than your average pills um but it's not a heavy beer by any stretch of the imagination mouthfeel it's a little bit dry uh on on the end um, which is typical for a pilsner it's not super duper thick at all but it's got a little bit more discernible thickness than your average pilsner again it's got a little higher ABV. That means there was more fermentables put into the batch to create the beer, which in kind typically is going to impart more thickness in terms of the mouthfeel as well as a more robust body. So this does uh, have both of those aspects in it. Um, the finish on this. What you get up front is that really bright floral nature that you get on the aroma from the hops comes through and it mixes with the malt. Now, I couldn't pick up that much malt on the aroma per se. It's kind of background playing uh, secondary to the hops, which I have no problem with that. <laughs> but uh, for uh, the way that it develops in this beer, once you get it in your mouth, it's got this sweetness that pairs with that floral, then the malts come in. Now, they don't taste overtly grainy, not like your classic Czech or German Pilsner malts. Um, but they do come through and it tastes like really good quality Pilsner malt that they used. I'm assuming uh, two row barley, um, classic Pilsner roast, a very lighter end of it. Uh, some are more deeply roasted than the others, but this is very, very clean indeed. Mm. There is a slight creaminess to the mouthfeel as well. And yep, and then it's hop beautiful floral and it mixes it's a combination of floral and earthy um, that's kind of the hot profiles that come through there's no citrus there's no pine or resin these are classic old-school European hops and um, they're some of my favorites the finish has that classic dryness you can still get that beautiful beautiful hop presence and then you just get the little malt that comes through and finishes up in the back and it almost does a little bit, it's a super, super light version of kind of how it goes it finishes with that kind of bread and toast and crust kind of finish in the back. It's just lovely. Um, the finish, 
is certainly longer than your average Pilsner due to the hot presence in, the, presence in this beer, but it's not long, you know, like akin to a barrel-aged Imperial Stout or something like that. It is for the style, but uh, not in terms of actual length uh, comparative to other beers. But this is a very, very good beer. I'm glad that I got to get my hands on it. I'm going to take my time, sip on this, come up with my scores, and when we come back, we will get both beers ranked top to bottom. Okay, now that we've gotten to enjoy both of these beers, we're going to go through and get them ranked. Uh, starting with the Untitled Art Italian Pilsner. This was 5% ABV there out of Wenaki or Wenaki, Wisconsin. I still don't know how to pronounce that city. So if anybody's watching these videos and you know, please let me know in the comments. I want to get it right. Uh, nonetheless, uh, starting with the aroma. The aroma on this one was okay. It wasn't particularly pronounced. You could get a sense of what the beer was going to be about, but it just didn't uh, have that much presence. Low end of average, it gets a four. Um, taste uh, turns completely around. This was a fantastic example of an Italian Pilsner. I absolutely loved it. They absolutely nailed it. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Uh, the body on this. This was textbook Pilsner. Really Italian, Czech, German, it doesn't matter. The body is all going to be the same. Uh, that was textbook. It gets a 10 out of 10. Mouthfeel on this, this had a very nice, very smooth, very creamy, silky, and a slightly effervescent mouthfeel. Pilsners tend to have such tight bubbles. That that's why they form such fine heads. Um, it's uh, that effervescence, those really tiny, tight uh, carbonation bubbles that create such high activity. They go hand in hand, and that does impart this uh, rather creamy mouthfeel on the average Pilsner. This was no exception, and it did have a slightly dry finish, as you expect from a Pilsner, so it really checked all the boxes. It gets a 10 out of 10. Uh, the finish on this, it was a very nice finish um, in terms of what you expect from the finish. I just would have liked it to be a little bit longer, um, and not to say that it was brief, just comparatively for other beers in the category, uh, I, I wished it were a bit longer. It was still well above average, it gets an eight. Uh, head and retention, this was a perfect textbook, lush creamy head, it gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Appearance-wise, this was another category where it just, I mean, it's checking off all the boxes. What's a Pilsner? What's a Pilsner? It, it nailed it. Perfect 10 out of 10. That beautiful pale uh, straw golden yellow color. Balance. This was such a well-balanced Pilsner. I was so pleased. You got to get all the hops that they put in there, which I, I like uh, a Pilsner that lets the hops shine, and this was no exception and you got the wonderful base malts that went into it and that classic sweetness, that, that dryness of the finish, everything about this was perfectly balanced for the style. It gets a 10 out of 10. Uh, feeling intangible? I loved it, I did. I'm a massive Pilsner fan when it's quality and it's done well, and this was done exceptionally well. I give it a perfect 10 out of 10. Finally, as an example of the style, yet again, another perfect 10 out of 10. This, this was just such a well done Pilsner and it was such a great representation of the slight differences. Um, Italian Pilsners are just a little bit different. They're a little more crisp. They have a little bit drier finish to them. Um, you know, and it, it was just so well done. It was exactly what I was expected. I, I could have cracked a, a Peroni or really any other Italian Pilsner I could think of. And I mean, honestly, this could stand up next to any of them. Just a fantastic Pilsner. I loved it. Perfect 10 out of 10. That brings the total score on the Untitled Art Italian Pilsner to a 92 out of 100. That's a very, very good score indeed, and it wholly deserves it, in my opinion. Uh, moving on to beer number two, the kind of interesting one of the bunch. Um, I'm not going to belabor what I've already uh, described when I was getting into this beer, but this is Odd 13 Brewing's Superfly, a Keller Pilsner, 5.5% ABV at a Lafayette, Colorado. Aroma. The aroma on this one was much more pronounced than on the Untitled Art offering. It was well above average, and um, I, I really appreciate that. It gave me a good sense of what I was going to get out of the beer before I even jumped in for my first sip. It gets a 7 out of 10. Taste? Wow, this was such a good Pilsner. Um, it, it really, really was. It uh, was a lot more hop forward than your average Pils. It was kind of like an American craft interpretation of a Czech or a German Pilsner, just a little more hop-centric, a little more forward, a little more bold. I loved it. Perfect 10 out of 10. Uh, buddy on this one, 
just as with the untitled art, uh, I think it nailed it. This had a bit more substance, but I expected that with a little bit higher ABV. It's certainly in range for a Pilsner, but it's on the high end, and it gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Uh, mouthfeel on this. The mouthfeel on this was nice. I rather expected that it would have a little bit drier finish to it than it did, and that's one of the only little uh, nitpick points that I had in the category. That and it, at five and a half, I expected just a bit more thickness. It was thicker than average, but not as thick as I expected. It shouldn't be a super thick style, but it was a combination of those two, and I was on the fence, but I went with my gut. I gave it a nine for the mouthfeel. Um, the finish on this one. The finish was excellent. It was very, very long. And uh, not just the hops, though it was a lot more hop-centric, so that added to the length that almost invariably will, and it was no exception in this case. But um, even the malt mill and that little sweetness you get up front and the interplay just kept going, just kept going. It, it was a very long finish for a Pilsner. It gets a 10 out of 10. Uh, head and retention, just like uh, with the untitled art, it uh, was a perfect textbook creamy Pilsner head. It gets a 10 out of 10. Um, Appearance-wise, it was also, much like the untitled art, a perfect pale straw yellow golden color. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Balance on this. This might surprise you, but I did not give it a perfect score. I actually, as much as I like a hop forward Pilsner and it was, I would have liked a little more malt to come through in this bill. The hops um, almost overpowered the malt to the, to the point where really one starts to be in mind much more of a session IPA than a Pilsner. And um, you know, they're different styles, but they do share a lot of common traits. And I just would have liked a little more of that malt to come through to kick it up, but still it gets a nine. Uh, feeling in the intangible, I loved it. I loved it. I mean, any Pilsner that's gonna give me a, a really hop forward nature to it is uh, aces in my book, especially if it does everything else well, and it did. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Finally, as an example of the style, Another perfect 10 out of 10 for me. This was such a fantastic Pilsner. It was bigger than your average Pilsner, kind of had that American twist on what the classic style is, and it was done so, so well. Um, perfect 10 out of 10. That brings the total score on the Odd 13 Brewing Superfly to a 95 out of 100. So both of these beers have very, very high scores, only three points apart. And uh, even though they're both the same style, kind of different directions. One went uh, with the Italian Pilsner, which is a little different subcategory. And one went with, I'm honestly not sure, because they call it Keller Pilsner. I, I'd say this is a Kraft American Pilsner. Perhaps it was uh, Keller conditioned and, and or stored or fermented. But uh, nonetheless, um, I really enjoyed both of these beers. I always love jumping into quality Pilsners, and these two are well worth seeking if you have not had them yet. I do highly recommend both of these beers. Quite different in the realm of Pilsners, but both well worth seeking. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's today's review. As always, I do sincerely thank you for tuning in. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, that's, that's the three. Uh, you don't need to hear me say it at the end of every review. Uh, likes really help. It helps the channel. It helps others find us. Uh, subscribing um, always helps because it gets more regular viewing and it'll keep you from losing our channel in the mix. Uh, comments are really big. I very much want to interact with you. Let me know your thoughts, opinions, feelings, questions, suggestions. Uh, just let me know. I'm here for you and I do want to hear from you. Uh, finally, if you want to keep in the loop and know when our videos go live to YouTube, you can click the notification bell that is right next to the subscribe button. Until next time, folks, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.